And okay, so um, we are recording now. Um, so as you know, um, we have a community calendar that includes um, many things, um, including slots for uh, teaching demos for people who are going through instructor training and community discussions, <coughs> excuse me, um, intended for people who are in instructor training as well as our active instructors. Um, and these are led by members of groups within the Carpentries community. Uh, teaching demos are led by our trainers and are used as part of the instructor training, training certification. And community discussions are led by a team of discussion hosts. Um, and these are a part of the instructor training certification process as well and are also open to active instructors who want to share recent or upcoming workshop experiences and for um, really any community member who wants to connect more with the Carpentries. Um, we've had historic ways of scheduling these events, but as we grow, we want to open this up more so that we're more accommodating of the people hosting these sessions as well as the people who are attending them. Um, so a snapshot of what we do now. We offer community discussion sessions, but these are typically at fixed dates and times. And so that means someone who wants to host a session has to be available um, at that day and time. And that anyone who wants to come also has to be available um, at that day and time, um, someone who wants to uh, participate. And so naturally that becomes a bit limiting. Um, since the events are at fixed times, um, it's hard for hosts to volunteer to lead them if they can't do those times. Um, it's hard for community members to attend if they can't do those times. Um, we also recognize that they're not really that representative and inclusive of a global community. We definitely see that the way things get scheduled, they get skewed to certain time zones and are less accommodating of others. Um, a bit of historic background just uh, to fill in that gap is that we did have these fixed times because we needed to be sure that um, some of the logistical stuff around um, having the video conferencing rooms available and things like that were ready and we didn't um, really necessarily have the staff capacity to manage all of that scheduling manually. Um, so our goal is to shift that and to start to schedule sessions when hosts are available. Um, we want scheduling to be driven by the host's schedule and calendar, um, hoping that the hosts represent a good cross-section of the Carpentries community. Um, as I said, our trader community has already been using the system for a few months to schedule teaching demos. And um, I'm glad that we have Karen on this call with us because she helped pilot that. Um, so Karen, uh, please jump in at any point if there is um, anything that you think um, uh, you want to add to um, what I'm talking about. Um, but what this really comes down to is that rather than us creating an event schedule and telling you to put it on your calendar, we are flipping it. Um, you create the event and you tell us to put it on the calendar. And we are managing that through um, a tool called Calendly. Uh, you might have seen um, Calendly um, when other people use it, you might have used it yourself to manage your own personal or work schedules. Um, it's a tool that syncs with common calendars like Google Calendar or Outlook. Um, and it lets an external person look at available slots on a given person's, or in this case, a resource like a Zoom room, a resources calendar, and book themselves in for a time slot. The resource then gets reserved for that slot. Um, no one else can claim that slot. And um, on the front end, like the way the user sees things, um, it adjusts for time zones as well. Um, so that um, it'll know that, you know, I am on the East Coast of the United States, so um, it'll look at North American Eastern time, it'll look at Central European time, if someone's doing this from, you know, Paris, um, wherever they might be. 
there's a few things that happen on the back end that I won't get too much into here in terms of just getting all of the tools set up and the calendars connected and things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but our staff infra infrastructure team um, will take care of that stuff. We then share the Calendly link with the hosts and they decide when they want to host a session. Um, they sign up for that and um, I'll go through some next steps of what happens there. Um, something I want to uh, just be sure that um, you all see is that this does not change the experience for the participants who sign up. They still see um, the available slots on the etherpad. Um, the main change for them is that it gives them a better range of options. So they aren't always at those fixed, I think it was like Tuesday, Thursday times um, that they have to sign up for. Um, so there's a link to Calendly here. Don't worry about taking this link down now. Um, we will uh, share it with you later. Um, but I'm gonna do a quick overview of what you'll actually do um, as a host to sign up for a Calendly, to sign up for a discussion slot. Um, and then I'll actually do it, like walk you through a live demo. Um, so we'll open up the Calendly link, um, go to the month you want to sign up for, um, <coughs> be sure that your time zone is correct, um, and look at the available dates and times and select what you would like to do. We offer slots um, on a 24 hour cycle. Um, since we work around the world, um, it's always a good time for someone somewhere. Um, but you'll choose a time, confirm it, and um, put in um, some information like your name and email address and such so that we know um, who you are. So um, I'm going to give you a demo to see what it's all like, and then I'm actually going to give you all a chance to test it out yourselves um, so that you can play around with it um, as well. So I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to open up um, this link. And you'll see that it comes up to this um, calendar page. Right now, there is a little warning saying that it's not an active um, calendar, just in case anyone happens to stumble upon it. Um, <coughs> but this will all go live in the next, I think, about week or so. Um, but you'll see that uh, there are available days. I can go um, forward into looking at other months. Let's say that I want to schedule an event for February 3rd, 9 a.m. my time. So I come into here, go to February, verify that the time zone that my browser has detected is correct. Um, I can change that if I need to. And then I said I was going to do something February 3rd at 9 a.m., right? So I'm choosing February 3rd, um, selecting my hour, confirming it. And then um, I'm going to put in my name, email, oops, name first. Um, because we have a few different types of discussions that people sign up for, um, we can note whether this is a pre post workshop discussion a theme discussion or a carpentry's conversation. And the latter two are special discussions that aren't intended for strictly doing that pre post workshop discussion, but they might be about a new curriculum launch or some new program that we're doing that we want to share. Um, and this lets people say that they want to do that as well. Um, we'll schedule the event. And it tells me that um, it's confirmed. Um, it gives me a link to add it to my calendar if I want to. Um, and it will also um, send an email to me verifying this. Um, what you'll also see now is I'm going to switch over um, to our handbook. In the handbook, we have a Zoom room calendar that's available for people to look at if they ever just want to double check before going into this whole thing to say, hey, was that time slot open? Um, I'm going to go to February 2020. Um, and I can see now there is this event that's been created. Um, 
uh, to 9 a.m. with my name on it. Um, one thing to um, just reiterate is that what this has done so far is reserved the Zoom room. It is not on the community calendar yet, um, and it's not on the Etherpad. Um, there are a few back end things that we do to get it there as well, um, but I'm not going to go into the details of that because it's just a couple of scripts that work with um, the Google Calendar API and Calendly's API to, you know, pull information and um, put it elsewhere. Um, but going back to this. Um, so we did, um, you saw just that quick um, demo of the setup. Um, to reiterate, you get the email sent to your email address confirming this. Um, and as I showed you at this point, we know that Zoom room two is booked for me um, February 3rd at 9 a.m. Eastern time. But it is not, again, as I said, on the etherpad and it's not on the community calendar. Um, we do some back end stuff to get it on the etherpad, get it on the community calendar. And once that's ready, um, once that's done, we are ready to have community members signing up. Because there are a few steps involved in this, right? Like we need you to um, note your availability and then we need to get it onto our calendars. We need to make sure that we're doing this on a set schedule. So we have cycles that we're doing this for. <coughs> for this demo, I was able to set something up for next week, um, just as a sample, but that's not actually going to be the case. We're going to schedule community discussions on a quarterly basis. Um, and so what we'll see for the next quarter is um, for the quarter that goes April 1st to June 30th, we're going to ask, um, we're going to email all of the discussion hosts on February 15th asking them to respond by February 28th, looking at that calendar saying, here are the slots I'll take between April and June. Um, on February 28th, we'll close the Calendly calendar signup um, and um, do all of our internal backend stuff so that we have a calendar published by March 7th. And then we'll continue to do that each quarter so that we um, keep things um, in sync. Um, that said, we completely recognize that, you know, sometimes there is um, some really cool thing that happened, a new program that's being launched, um, something with our curriculum that you might want to talk about. <coughs> so when that happens, please let us know and we'll definitely get it on the calendar. But we want to make those the off, um, edge cases. Um, for the most part, we want to um, try and schedule things um, in advance so that, um, you know, people, um, our community members also have a chance to look at that calendar and say, okay, this is what I'm going to come. Um, so I am going to give you a chance to test it out yourselves. I'm going to paste a link to the Calendly um, page in the uh, Zoom chat. Um, schedule yourself for an event or even a couple of events, see what happens um, between now and February 7th. Um, as you see this, um, you start to do this, you'll see some time slots disappear. Um, look for the email notification that you get about the event. As soon as this call is over, I'm going to be canceling all of the events, so feel free to mess with it as much as you want. Um, you won't mess with any of our systems for now. Oops, so I am going to share the calendar link with you in the Zoom chat. I'm going to stop sh screen sharing for a moment. Okay, so in the Zoom chat, you should now see a link to Calendly. Um, I'll give you maybe about three or four minutes. Uh, just go ahead and schedule yourself in. Um, and Sarah, yes, I know that you've done this as a trainer.
And so if you do, um, Sarah, having used as, as a trainer or Karen, since you've managed this, um, have any anything else that you want to add, please do. I have a um, Karen, you have to have a hand. Yeah, um, Mike, is, um, is there any where that people can look when signing up for this to clarify the definitions of themed discussion versus Carpentry's conversation? Um, um, yes, I know that we have that published somewhere. Sarah, do you remember where that's published? Okay. <laughs> I uh, wonder a link or some, or maybe at some extra text. I, I don't want to clunk clutter up your thing too much, but. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, I know that we have it linked somewhere. I will um, look that up and add that too. Um, add that to the question. Awesome. Yeah, Angelique. Hi, um, quick question. At the moment, the Etherpad has set days and times, right? Of when it can in different time zones. But looking at this, it shows me my whole day and where I'm busy. So I'm going to, I, being a discussion host, are going to set the times now that I'm available and then the learners checking out those participating community discussions are going to fall into that. Am I understanding it correctly? Boom. Thanks. Yes. That's so, all. um, when, like, what time is it for you right now, Angelique? 8 p.m. 8.30 p.m. Yeah. yeah. About. So it's almost 1.30 p.m. for me. Um, if you wanted to do your thing at 8 p.m., you can go ahead and do that. Like if you decide, hey, I actually prefer evenings. Um, likewise, if, um, I was hosting and someone in South Africa was like, hey, you know, in the evenings after I put the kids to bed or after I do this is a great time for me to join. They now have that option. Okay, cool. No, uh, I'm yes. liking it. I'm just wondering, are we going to perhaps have many slots that might not be filled? I'm just wondering about that, especially because my time zone's kind of an outlier in a sense, right? So yeah okay but let's see i love the idea that with the flexibility i'm yeah. absolutely loving it yeah yeah so sarah thanks for posting the link to the um discussions um angelique you are actually um uh, even though you're in south africa you're very close to european time mm. and about so one hour I have, have, yeah. um, a large community over um, throughout africa and in europe so um mm. you're not actually that much of an outlier mm, okay. um we also hope that our um, discussion hosts community represents a good cross-section of our larger community. And so this, again, like right now, we actually skew a little bit away from like Australia, New Zealand, Pacific time zones, and we're hoping that this will let us be more accommodating um, of that. Um, Scott, you have a hand. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, thanks. I have a couple questions. Um, so yeah, I use Calendly here to schedule research advisory services meetings, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, the one thing I wanted to ask about is, so the carpenters are scheduling these um, quarterly, so is this going to start up, I think the, it was through March, or March 3rd is when the next one, so is that when the, the Calendly is going to go into effect, is starting March 3rd? So we'll do our next round of scheduling starting February 15th. That's when we'll okay. ask you to share your availability for a calendar that starts the second quarter of 2020. So that's April to June of 2020. Okay. So right in, now, oh, sorry. So until April, it's just going to be the normal, how the carpentries are doing the sessions? Yes. Okay. And then um, since we are scheduling them like um, in a whole quarter's worth of things, if we schedule too far in advance and then something comes up and we have to, we can't make a session. Is there a protocol to go through for that? Um, yes, yeah, and we're gonna get into um, some of those kinds of things in just a minute. That's a great question. We completely understand that, you know, you thought today that June 1st was gonna be great, but then something happened on May 31st um, or even before that, that yes, um, you can I mean, definitely I can, contact us to. I mean, I can see something like, my department putting like an all day retreat or something on the, right. something like that. And it was just like, Oh, that's in, they'll tell us two months in advance, but I've already scheduled something three months in advance. So. Right. Right. And we definitely recognize things like that can happen. So, 
Um, yes, you can definitely contact us when that happens. Great. Yeah. Otherwise, I think this is fabulous. It definitely makes it easier for me to um, host uh, discussion sessions. Okay, great. Um, so um, I'm going to share a couple of other things and then um, see if you all have any other final uh, thoughts or questions. Oh, Karen, you had to, we get your last hand? Sorry. Nope, that, I had the, that was my same question as what's your cancellation policy? So I'll okay. type. Um, so let's go back here. Um, I'm going to start screen sharing again. Okay. So you tested it out. I know um, some of you have used um, Calendly in other contests, so the general process um, is familiar. Um, we talked about some questions you all had. Um, I want to reiterate some of the benefits of why we're doing this. I think some of you saw that um, in the conversation we had. Um, you can schedule things when you want. Um, if you know that you're going to have a certain slow week, if you know you prefer mornings, you prefer evenings, um, whatever the case might be. Um, likewise, community members will also have the option of more slots so that they can schedule things um, that better meet their schedule. Um, ideally, we hope that this gets more people doing um, pre-post discussions um, from our community of active instructors and that it gets more people through the instructor training checkout process um, because we're giving them more options. Um, we won't have events without coverage uh, because everything is scheduled at the request of a host. So nothing gets scheduled unless it has a host. Um, and so I know that some of you have seen the calls where um, you know, we um, reach out to our discussion host community saying, hey, there's this event tomorrow that you know, nobody signed up for, you know, please help. Um, we hopefully won't have to do that. Um, Carpentry's staff will be in a position to easily identify and fill in gaps like an empty week. So when we look at the quarter's schedule, if we see like, hey, nobody signed up for that first week in April, a couple of us will be like, okay, let's take a um, slot um, in that week. Um, and then lastly, um, this is um, related to your question, Scott, that yes, we completely understand emergencies can happen, things can change. Um, so please, um, if that does, um, come to us uh, so that we can help find coverage um, as needed. Because um, we are still all um, a team and definitely want to keep uh, supporting each other. Um, just a few, um, a little sneak preview of some of the next things that we're looking at. Um, we're in the process right now of upgrading some of our Calendly services to premium accounts, um, which will let us do things like send posts a reminder um, a day or two in advance of your upcoming session, um, a thank you a day later reminding you to complete the form if you haven't, um, possibly looking into having these be group events. Um, if any of you have used Calendly's premium features, like once in, you can have like events already booked on a calendar and participants can actually join these. Um, so we can say, hey, here's an event for, you know, 15 people, 15 people can sign up and they then also get the same kinds of reminders. That, some of that backend stuff, we need to figure out exactly how we're going to make it work. Um, we don't have a set timeline in place, but it is something that we are keeping in mind because we want to uh, definitely make it easier on all of you and on our community members who attend. Um, so I think that that's it. I'm going to, I just lost my Zoom thing. Okay, I'm going to stop screening, um, screen sharing now and see if you have any other final thoughts, questions, comments. Okay. Yeah, Scott. Um, so, I mean, when we use it here at uh, Berkeley, where there's a feature like, let's say I set up like research advisory services from, I usually do it from two to three on Mondays and Tuesdays and people can sign up. But um, like in the semester, if I know something's coming up, I can actually delete it from my calendar and it deletes it from Calendly and then people can't sign up for it. 
Um, but since this is actually being also connected to an etherpad and everything like that, so if you know like two months in advance, nobody signed up, well, you would still just contact the Carpentries to cancel it. You would be able to cancel it through Calendly. Um, yes, so if you cancel it through Calendly, it still is going to be on our etherpads, and so people are still going to be able to sign up for it. And that's, I think it sounds like, um, Scott, you've been using that group um, event feature where you have an event that people can sign up for directly on Calendly, right? Yeah, I think we, I think we have the premium account here or something okay. like that, because, yeah, they, um, I know that somebody is like, oh, I want to meet with you at this time, and then we, you yeah. know. Right. So um, right now, the piece of that, like if you do need to cancel an event, we do still want you to um, contact the uh, IDC leadership team. Um, and then we can make sure that it's off our calendars and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, just removing it from Calendly won't trigger all the other things from happening. Um, we will get a notification so that it'll actually be on someone's radar to say, oh, Scott canceled this event. Um, let's see what we need to do. Um, right, One thing that I have um, found useful for the for teaching demo cancellations, um, sometimes if it's far enough ahead of time, you'll have a situation where nobody signed up for it yet. And in those cases, it's nice to get it off the etherpad as soon as possible before anybody jumps in and signs up. Um, so I've been telling folks if 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 nobody signed up for your event, like first things first, go ahead and remove it from the etherpad then contact people and you know whatever else like um but you know when when that happens it's nice to take advantage of it because <laughs> you don't have to worry about rescheduling those folks yeah great thanks Karen, for sharing that and then if people are signed up you know you can still let us know that you need to cancel and we can um, look to find uh coverage for that but again, ideally we won't have that happen. We won't have what happens now where we have these pre-scheduled events and you know, people just aren't available at that one given day and time. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions, comments, anything? Okay, so um, I am um, gonna be working with uh, Sarah Rono, who's our staff liaison to the Instructor Development Committee. Uh, to be sure that this recording is shared with all of the team members um, and to get all of you um, as of February 15th, um, you know, have you all start signing up for events from April to June. Um, and we'll be building our calendar from there. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming. And like I said, um, you should see something in about mid-February um, to officially get you signed up. Great, thank you. Great, thanks everyone. Bye everyone. See you all, nice to meet you, Scott. Bye-bye, have a nice day.